Would you please stand? The opening prayer will be given by Councilman Paul Reddick, and then we will have the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening thanking you for all the blessings you bestow upon us as a city. We thank you for letting us see a new year. We ask that this new year you will have comfort, you will have concern for this city, that those persons who are homeless, those persons who are homeless, those persons who are hungry and drug addicted, those persons who have absolutely nothing, that your blessings will shine down on them and make their lives better. We ask you to give us the ability to do this job in a fair and just manner. These and all the blessings we ask in thy name, amen. Amen. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. The clerk will please call the roll. Mr. Burford? Here. Mr. Protegeria? Here. Mr. Riddick? Here. Mr. Smeagol? Here. Dr. Wibley? Here. Ms. Williams? Here. Mr. Wynn? Here. Mr. Brain? Here. The motion is to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting, please. Mr. Burford? Aye. Mr. Protegeria? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Uh, aye. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Norfolk City Council Chambers. We're glad to have you here. For the benefit of those of you who do not regularly attend our council sessions, the process that we will follow tonight is the first thing we're going to do is we'll take up public hearings. <clears throat> and we have six of them. We'll move after the public hearings. We'll move directly to the consent agenda. There are a lot of uh, items on the consent agenda, but the council may uh, elect to vote on all of these matters uh, in one vote. And then we'll move to the regular agenda. We have a number of regular agenda items uh, this evening. We have a lengthy docket. We have 23 items. We'll vote on all of these matters in just the way they are numbered on the printed docket. Uh, <clears throat> at the conclusion of our regular agenda, if any member of the public would like to address the City Council on a non-agenda item, that's something that's not on the printed docket, you'll be given that opportunity. All that we ask is that you sign a slip of paper which the clerk has made available in the rear of the council chambers before the meeting began, and a number of you have elected to do that. <clears throat> uh, we have one ceremonial matter before we begin our formal agenda, and we have the Brain Gain <clears throat> Proclamation, and I guess well, that's why we have a number of, of uh, the Brain Gainers here. And we have uh, <laughs> Cheryl Montgomery is here to accept the, uh, the proclamation. Cheryl, do you want to identify anybody else that's with you, by the way? Yes, I'd like for uh, Mr. Mayor and members of council, if I could, ask uh, everybody that's uh, behind this initiative in the city to please stand. Okay. Great. Terrific. Well, thank you all for coming down. Here, please take it. Okay, and I'll read the proclamation, and then we'd love to hear from you. So, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The proclamation reads, uh, whereas in a knowledge-based economy, attracting and retaining young talent and utilizing the creat creativity and energy they bring, is vital to the economic success of a city and its surrounding region. And whereas business leaders in Norfolk have launched a public initiative to make Norfolk and the region a magnet for talented young professionals, and whereas the Brain Gain campaign to survey young professionals will be underway throughout the month of January in order to gather information to drive a community action plan, and whereas business leaders throughout the region will be engaged in the solutions needed to make the desired improvements that will attract and retain young professionals. Whereas Brain Gain promotes and unifies our communities and assets. Whereas Brain Gain celebrates the pool of talent in the Hampton Roads region by engaging young professionals to focus, collaborate, and invent the future. And whereas Brain Gain visioning will be put into action and increase our competitiveness for young professionals throughout the country. Now, therefore, I, Paul Frame, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, to hereby proclaim January 2012 as Brain Gain Month in the city of Norfolk and invite all citizens to observe this month as we position ourselves to embrace and nurture future entrepreneurs and the next generation of growth companies that will, that will power Norfolk and the region's future growth and prosperity given under my hand this 10th day of January 22. You're not so young though, Cheryl. What are you doing? <laughs> I mean, you're, trying. More, you're trying, right? <laughs> Sure, we'd be glad to hear from you, please. Hey, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, Mr. City Manager. Uh, 
Greater Norfolk Corporation about a year ago uh, took on about three challenges with task forces uh, in regards to career uh, technical training for high school students, uh, the governor's school on STEM, and also uh, trying to maintain young professionals uh, within our city or to attract them to our city. And uh, being chairman of that task force on brain gain, uh, I want to let you know that there's a lot of energy uh, that's shown here in the room tonight, both with uh, support from our task force members, Greater Norfolk Corporation, our business leaders, and a, a lot of our very young entrepreneurial uh, professionals that have joined us tonight. Uh, Generation Norfolk was created for this initiative, and Generation Norfolk are the future uh, leaders of our city. And uh, we've worked very close uh, with Old Dominion University, the Social Science Research Center is conducting a survey uh, with the help of our young professionals, uh, not only in Norfolk, but the region. Hopefully this feedback uh, will provide us uh, survey information. And you do have that on your uh, PDF file on your uh, little iPod in front of you. Um, we have gone high tech. You should have something that, uh, that, that's on your iPad. Uh, you'll probably see people on the street uh, doing a survey with a shirt. And Mr. Mayor, I think this is probably... It's a little uh, skinny. For you. Yeah, not... <laughs> see, you get it on, Montgomery. I wouldn't... This is yours, right? <laughs> and uh, we also, Mr. Mayor, uh, will have uh, business cards that we'll put throughout businesses in downtown that locates our website, which is generationnorfolk.com. Uh, there will be thousands of these dispersed in the city. Hopefully, uh, young professionals and others can take this survey and tell us uh, what is important to them to be retained and attracted in our city. Uh, there will be a community action plan developed from the feedback from the survey. I can't say too much uh, or too much about uh, the relationship we've had with the higher education institutions, uh, with the student bodies and young professionals in our city all the way from the Medical College to TCC, Norfolk State University, Virginia Westland, and especially Old Dominion in assisting us with the uh, survey. This community action plan we'll be glad to share with the council as a whole. We think it's going to be an important step to continue to attract entrepreneurs, new business people, and young professionals, both that work in downtown now and hopefully will work here in the future. Um, these business entrepreneurs and creates job opportunities, helps stimulate the economy, and believe it, we have young people in this city that want to be a part of the future to grow this city. And I think the representation that's here tonight is a good one. Uh, there will be a number of surveys uh, with the iPads hitting the streets tomorrow. The website is up. The survey is ready to be taken. And I'm hoping that the council will visit that website, take a look at the survey, and look forward to the information. Uh, Lisa Chandler is with us here tonight, president of uh, Greater Norfolk Corporation and other board members of the task force. And again, I think this is a strong support from the mentors, the old guys, uh, influencing and uh, telling the young guys and ladies, let's take part in Norfolk's future. Thank you. Great. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming down and being, being a part of this really important and worthwhile effort. I want to thank the Greater Norfolk Corporation for uh, organizing, if not you know, leading uh, all of this. And Cheryl, your involvement, that's the longest speech you've given down here in years. I mean, I, it's good to see you get excited about it. But it's good to see so many uh, of the young community here as well. We appreciate your, your concern and care about the city. So uh, we're going to work with you to make sure that we can develop an environment that uh, you'll want to be a part of in the future as well. So thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And our, our partnerships uh, continue to grow. Fest events is an example, provide all the laptops. Uh, you know, it, it's just a good thing once the word gets out. And uh, we hope more businesses and leaders in our community will take part in this effort. Great. Thanks, Cheryl. Cheryl, is the goal at the end of the day once the survey is complete and uh, that at some point that survey will come into the to the council. And yes, sir. Recommendations have yes, been Yes, sir, it will. Okay, excellent. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Uh, for those of you who've just come to be a part of this, it's okay if you'd like to, to move on, believe me. We won't. Uh,
provide more oxygen for us. Let's maybe pull it down here. How come the mayor got a t-shirt? Yeah. Ah. Doesn't fit though, I promise you. Terry didn't do either. Angela, the only ones that will fit. Mike Smeagol. You'll be happy to know that the creative class goes up to 65. So Mr. Riddick, <laughs> Mr. Wynn, and I are just squeaking in. Right. <laughs> okay. And we'll call public hearing number one. Public hearing one scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on November 22, 2011 under state law. Public notice having been inserted in the local press by the city clerk to hear comments on a request by the Norfolk Apostolic Church, Inc. for exemption from real estate property taxes on property located at 3166 Azalea Garden Road. All right, uh, Pastor Blankenship is here to answer questions, I believe. If anyone has any, he's a proponent. Any questions? Pastor, do you want to make a comment? I think we're okay, actually. Well. All right. Uh, all right. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks for coming down. Andrew. I'm just going to greet you. Okay. Um, call the roll, please. I have an ordinance granting an exemption from real estate taxes for real property at Norfolk Apostolic Church, Inc., located at 3166 Azalea Garden Road, dispensed with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigo? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing two. Public hearing two scheduled for this day, pursuant to action of council on November 22, 2011, under state law to hear comments on a request by the Chrysler Museum, Inc. for exemption from real estate property taxes on properties located at 1200, 1208, and 1210 Bosvane Avenue. Okay, there are no members of the public signed up to address the council on this matter, so if there are no questions, you can call the roll. Have an ordinance granted an exemption from real estate taxes for real property, the Chrysler Museum, Inc., located at 1200, 1208, and 1210 Bosvane Avenue, dispensed with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Uh, I have one question. And it concerns uh, two and three, uh, public hearing two and three. Will either of these, have these organizations been paying taxes? And if so, will they be asking for reimbursement? My understanding, I think, Daryl, is that any um, ordinance that we put before you from the administration, that the entity is up on their taxes. Okay. One, yes, sir. I mean, but, uh, but in a lot of instances when an institution uh, is granted tax ex exemption. Sometimes they will say, "Well, how about paying us the <coughs> money back, reimbursing us?" They don't get anything. Back. Yeah, and my understanding is we wouldn't no something that would go okay. backwards here. All right. Okay. I vote aye. Mr. Smeagol. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Ms. Williams. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. Public hearing three, please. Public hearing three scheduled for this day. <clears throat> pursuant to action of council on November 22, 2011, to hear comments on a request by the Union Mission Holding Corporation for exemption from real estate property taxes on properties located at 5100, 5310, and 121 East Virginia Beach Boulevard. All right, we have three folks who have signed up to address the council on this matter. That's uh, Jim Herndon, Phil Farthing, and Linda Vaughn uh, are here to answer questions. Hi, folks, good to see you again. Hi, Phil. I saw you, Jim. Linda, nice to see you. All right, are there any questions? I call the roll, please. I have an ordinance granting an exemption from real estate taxes for real property of the Union Mission Holding Corporation. Dispensed with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing four. Thanks for coming down. Thank you. Public hearing four scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on November 22, 2011 to hear comments on a request by the Ecumenical Family Shelter, Inc. for exemption from real estate property taxes on property located at 822 West 37th Street. Okay, again, there's no one signed up to address the council on this issue. If there are no questions, you can call the roll. I have an ordinance granted an exemption from real estate taxes for real property of Ecumenical Family Shelter, Inc. located at 822 West 37th Street, dispensed with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing five. Public hearing five scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on December 13, 2011 to hear comments to consider the acquisition of a permanent right-of-way easement and a temporary construction easement for the purpose of constructing and maintaining a handicapped access ramp for a public sidewalk on private property located at 2922 Cape Henry Avenue. Okay, you can call the roll. There's no one signed up to <coughs> An ordinance finding a public necessity for the acquisition of a permanent right-of-way easement for the purpose of constructing and maintaining a handicap access ramp located at 2922 Cape Henry Avenue and for temporary construction easement for the purpose of facilitating the improvement of the public sidewalk on Cape Henry Avenue, authorizing the acquisition by condemnation of both the permanent and temporary easements at 2922 Cape Henry Avenue 
said property situated in the city of Norfolk and authorizing the expenditure of the sum of $495 to acquire such. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing six. Public hearing six scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on December 13, 2011 to hear comments on authorizing the conveyance to the Transportation District Commission of Hampton Roads of certain parcels of property bounded on the south by Curly Drive and repealing ordinance number 44422. Call the roll, please. An ordinance authorizing the conveyance to Transportation District Commission of Hampton Roads of certain parcels of property bounded on the south by Curly Drive subject to the reservation of certain rights by the City of Norfolk and repealing ordinance number 44422 dispensed with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. All right, the consent agenda. There are um, 12 items on the consent agenda. <coughs> Would any member of the council like to have any one of these matters uh, considered separate? Yeah. Three, five, and seven. All right. Three, five, and seven. And seven. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mr. Clark, if you'll call the consent agenda C1, C2, C4, C6, yes, sir. Eight, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Okay, we'll approve consent agenda except 3, 5, and 7. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Uh, do you want to yeah, consider okay. all three of them together or just? Yeah. Uh, just a, 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 a qu couple of questions. Um, uh, a month or so ago, we had one uh, for Plum Line Ministry, which was considered, I guess you'd say, a profit-making uh, entity. And this particular collates Levy Harold Enterprises, and I would imagine Family Properties LLC, and uh, Cal Investments. Cal Investments. Uh, they should pay for these, just like uh, you know, just like uh, they should be payable. The uh, Plum Line Ministries uh, property was in the for development right. program. Mm -hmm. These are the irregular shaped side lots. Um, Not for development. They, they must own the properties adjacent okay. to them. Okay, correct. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, and approve three, five, and seven. Good call, Mr. Riddick. Right. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R1, please. R1 is an ordinance closing, vacating, and discontinuing portions of St. Julian Avenue and authorizing the conveyance to Norfolk Southern Railway Company of any interest the city may have in the underlying fee of said portions of St. Julian Avenue. And this was the matter of a public hearing that was passed by December 13. Right. All right. There's no one here who signed up to address the council on this matter, so. Call the roll, please. Have an ordinance closing, vacating, and discontinuing portions of St. Julian Avenue and authorizing the conveyance to Norfolk Southern Railway Company of any interest the city may have in the underlying fee of said portions of St. Julian Avenue. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt. Well, first, I want to thank the city administration <coughs> uh, uh, and the mayor. To do with the We've been through this issue and uh, wanted to make sure that we get it right. We want to uh, I would hope that the meeting that we had the other day with uh, Amtrak and um, it stated in the administration that uh, the next meeting that uh, will, that will be had is that <coughs> we will set something up to meet with the community and go through all of those details that we went through, all the concerns that the community had as it relates to uh, the train uh, and the community. So um, um, I vote aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. And I want to uh, thank uh, the Vice Mayor for paying attention to matters which got by a lot of us actually on a couple of occasions now. So appreciate your paying attention to all this as well, Anthony. Uh, R2, please. An ordinance to amend and reordain the Norfolk City Code 1979 by adding a new section number 25-286.23 so as to designate that portion of the 35 and 3600 blocks of Kentucky Avenue and the 3500 block of Mississippi Avenue as a residential parking permit area. Um, Mr. Hawkins, <coughs> you're the only one who signed up to speak. We'd be glad to hear from you. Good evening, Mayor Frame, City Manager Jones, Vice Mayor Burford, members of council. My name is Philip Hawkins, Jr. I reside at 3597 Mississippi Avenue, City of Norfolk, and um, I am 
a proponent of this, of course. So I want to thank the council, thank the administration for moving forward on this. I was surprised it was on the agenda tonight. So I thank you. Um, I was told it was a delay due to some administrative work that needed to be done on the permit program. But I am excited about the fact that it will, it will be permanent for our community in those areas that are directly affected by light rail. And um, also, um, just as a note of concern, we, we want to make sure, because other residents have also noticed that, you know, we, we would like to, we have the police presence in the community and we appreciate that. However, um, when there are instances where the enforcement for the, for the program has to take place, um, we still have to initiate that and we would like to ask that there are regular patrols to, you know, to, to be self-initiated instead of having to wait for a response from, you know, an incident that may possibly be happening. So Thanks. that would be it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protegiru. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagol. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Ms. Williams. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. R3. An ordinance requesting the Virginia Department of Transportation to establish a project for the Jamestown Crescent Culvert Improvements Project approving an agreement with the Commonwealth Department of Transportation for the design and construction of said project and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of funds for the project in the amount of $750,000 subject to and in accordance with the terms and conditions of the agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? This is a no-brainer to vote on this, but I, I'm just curious. Um, when we were looking at the Mason Creek culvert project, did we try to pursue VDOT money? Um, to support that, yeah. No, no. Um, we didn't because of the because of the uh, timing of the schedule. Whenever we get VDOT money, there's a cons significant length and period, and we had the funding for uh, Mason Creek, so we went ahead without the VBOT. Okay. I just, you know, I, I guess I'll use this as an opportunity real quick to just say I think it was a mistake that we ha we didn't do more with that, and if any of you have an opportunity to drive down Granby Street and see what's being done there now, it's awful. It's, I mean, for a million dollars, um, th what they're putting in there, um, the crooked sidewalks and curb lines, um, is what we're getting for a million bucks and it would have been nice if we would have moved forward with um, Making sure we did that project right and tried to pursue even delay it and try to pursue funding from VDOT on it But I think it was a mistake um, But I don't want to hold that against Jamestown Crescent But I hope in the future that when we look at other projects that we we even if it means delaying it that we look at VDOT funding for those as well Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Ms. Williams. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. R4. An ordinance requesting the Virginia Department of Transportation to establish a project for the 2nd Street at Brambleton Avenue traffic signal project, proving an agreement with the Department of Transportation for design and construction of the project, appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of funds in the amount of $500,000 subject to and in accordance with the terms and conditions of the agreement, dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protegiru. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Will this make the... Uh light rail in is safer. It seems to me that both of the accidents we have are right at 2nd Street. Probably. I vote aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R5. An ordinance requesting the Virginia Department of Transportation to establish a project for the Kimball Terrace Culvert Improvements Project, approving an agreement with the Department of Transportation for design and construction, and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of funds in the amount of $500,000 subject to and in accordance with the terms and conditions of the agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R6. An ordinance accepting a grant in the amount of $25,150 from the National Preparedness Directorate, United States Department of Homeland Security 2011 Port Security Grant Program and appropriating the grant funds in the amount of $25,150 to purchase two inflatable rescue boats with motors and two trailers for Norfolk Fire Rescue. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Art 7.
an ordinance accepting a 2010 State Homeland Security Program grant of $12,000 from the National Preparedness Directorate, United States Department of Homeland Security, and Virginia Department of Emergency Management for the Citizen Preparedness Program. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R8? An ordinance to amend section 16-92 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 to update the designated city depositories. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Does everybody know what that means? Yeah. Okay. It's the bank. Okay. All right. Money. Sorry. Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Abstain. Um, R9. R9, please. An ordinance to amend and reordain section 25 660 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 so as to add two automated traffic signals. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R10. An ordinance permitting SLNWC Residential Company LLC to encroach into the right of way at 420 Monticello <coughs> Avenue, 421 Bank Street, 441 Bank Street, and 328 Freemason Street with building, fascia, and balconies. <coughs> Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R11. An ordinance to amend and reordain Section 24-7 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 so as to incorporate the Virginia statutory procedure for the Council to direct the City Treasurer to issue refunds of taxes erroneously paid in accordance with state law. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R12. An ordinance approving an institutional development plan to include a replacement tower at Centerley Hospital on property located at 830 to 850 Kimsville Road by 6-0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R13, please. A resolution for the City of Norfolk to join the 100,000 Homes for 100,000 Homeless Americans campaign in an effort to end homelessness. Ellis James. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, City Manager Jones, and Barclay Wynn. Nice to see you back alive and well and doing what you do best. Thank you. I would like to uh, remind you that in this new year, it's still Ellis W. James, who resides at 2021 Ken Lake move, Place. You didn't move? Here in the city of Norfolk. I have... Uh, decided to speak to this issue simply because I think it's important for people who work in housing to have a say when important issues come forward. We've been working on <coughs> homelessness, thanks to you, Mr. Mayor, and the members of the council for quite some time. I happen to be president of Tidewater Fair Housing Incorporated, which is a volunteer group that fights discrimination in housing. And it is extremely important for the quality of life for all of our citizens here in Norfolk to be able to solve this problem of homelessness. Now, in the agenda, it spells out very carefully the least among us and those who suffer from serious problems that help to create homelessness not to mention the veterans especially who are also experiencing a great deal of, of difficulty on their return to this country. Uh, I fully support what you're attempting to do here and I'm very pleased to see that Norfolk is going to join in after leading originally the effort to address homelessness here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay, you can call the roll. Adopt a resolution. I have a quick question to the manager. It says that our this is going to be a regional partnership. I saw something to that effect. Have we heard from the other cities, or is this something we're going to step out on and be on our own? 
We've been working with the other cities in terms of homeless, homelessness to begin with. As a matter of fact, I, I do believe Sarah. Sarah's but, here. Yeah. And we, Sarah, do you want to come yeah. forward? I don't know if you heard the question or not, but Andy, do you want to? I did. Thank you. Um, the uh, Regional Task Force to End Homelessness, which is the uh, Southampton Roads uh, group of mayors and chairs, uh, foreign body, came together and decided to take this on as a regional activity. Um, and I would love to tell you I know exactly the count, but I believe Virginia Beach Council has <coughs> a resolution, and I know that we do have um, interest from Portsmouth and Chesapeake. Mayor Frame actually might know better than I. Um, Portsmouth and Chesapeake, um, that they're interested. I do know that the continual care of w the Western Tidewater area is looking at the matter. They're deciding, basically, do they have the um, the ability to uh, kind of take it on as a group? And we're looking at a way to maybe kind of adopt them in our work. Thanks, Gary. Another question. Thank you. It, it, it is, it's, it's a national <laughs> effort, but also one that the region has embraced as well. I mean, I read through it, and I th my only concern is, is that, and I don't want to sound callous in any manner, but it's something that we take on and we have some belief that it's a regional issue and we take it on, the next thing you know, we're the only ones doing it. And then we absorb all of the responsibility to deal and the infrastructure and I, I understand <coughs> that it's not a budget issue per se, that donations will be sought, but then we end up taking the, the, the responsibility for something like this and the other cities don't buy in. And the key for me is we have a buy-in from the other cities, and we're just not the only ones in the forefront with our with the responsibility because it comes with it's not just reading a letter. It's this it comes with a responsibility, and I just don't like the idea of us perhaps being on our own. And I accept what she said. It's my understanding that the other cities are involved, uh, and that the beach you said has already passed. You think uh, an ordinance? And Stanley has agreed. So that, that I just don't want to but, be the yeah, only one and, out there. Well, let me, you know, I appreciate the point that you've made. Um, the region actually has been a model for the country in working together on solving homelessness issues. We have Sarah working for us here, but there's Andy uh, Frieden at, at the beach is, uh, is uh, the staff person at the beach who is responsible for the uh, for homeless issues. Um, when we began the Gosnold apartment effort, it was a regional effort with uh, not only homeless folks from, uh, from Norfolk, but also from Portsmouth and I think Virginia Beach at the time. The idea is that these other communities would then build apartments and units, uh, single occupancy, SOI, uh, uh, homes, uh, and Virginia Beach has carried through on it. Uh, Chesapeake is carrying through on it. Portsmouth, they're all doing exactly what they said they would do. And nobody has dropped out or said we're too busy on the homeless issues. Well, there's there's been in the past, there's been malicious rumors, and I say malicious rumors, and not to even repeat them, because they are malicious rumors, uh, that uh, a lot of the assets of this fall upon the city of Norfolk uh, and other cities. Uh, again, uh, those rumors take advantage of what uh, we have done in stepping out, and I just don't want us to be the only ones involved. This is, if it's a regional issue, then we need to be guaranteed that these other cities are going to step up. I don't want to be hanging out there alone. And we've had past issues that have been regional issues that haven't proved fruitful. So we just need to be very careful when we enter regional cooperations that we do it appropriately and that we do it in all seriousness that the other cities are going to be serious. Thank you. Have we voted? Are you going to call the vote? Okay. Mr. Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protegeria. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagol. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Ms. Williams. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. R14. An ordinance granting a downtown <coughs> development certificate to permit exterior modifications to an existing building and a change of use on property located at 135 East Olney Road. By 7 0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protegiru. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagol. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Ms. Williams. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. R15. An ordinance granting a pedestrian commercial overlay district development certificate to permit construction of a fence on property located at 222 West 21st Street by 6 0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. 
Mr. Rozier. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smigel. Aye. Dr. Webley. Aye. Ms. Williams. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. R16, please. An ordinance authorizing the purchase from Mary from Mary Beichner, Brenda Stafford, Catherine Hewitt, and Jean Burge of certain property located in the city of Norfolk and commonly known as WS Gar Garfield Drive for the sum of $40,000, approving the terms and conditions of the purchase and sale agreement and authorizing the expenditure of the sum of up to $65,000 from funds heretofore appropriated to pay for the purchase price and other transaction costs. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protegiru. What What's the reason, again, for this? R16 to purchase. Is it 15 or 16? 16. 16 for a sewer pump station. Pump station. Yeah. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smigel. Aye. Dr. Webley. Aye. Ms. Williams. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. Uh, R17. An ordinance permitting direct invest 500 East Main LLC to encroach into the right of way of 500 East Main Street with three flag poles and flags. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protegiru. I, uh, my law firm rents in this building, and can I vote on this? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, you can. That with that declaration that uh, uh, if you can vote um, in the public interest, you can vote. You could vote no if you like. I mean, you can. <laughs> uh, my rent will probably go up if I vote yes. Uh, aye. <laughs> Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R18. An ordinance granting permission to Baybreeze Point Homeowners Association to encroach into the rights of way of Pleasant Avenue and 30th Bay Street, subject to certain conditions and approving the terms and conditions of the encroachment agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Just uh, to go along the lines with Annie, this is my homeowners association, um, but I've discussed this with the city attorney and there's no conflict with this. In fact, I didn't even know about it till I read the agenda on Friday, um, but I. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R19? An ordinance granting a special exception to operate an entertainment establishment on property located at 931 West 21st Street by a 6 0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R20. A resolution <laughs> approving the City of Norfolk's legislative priorities for the 2012 General Assembly session and requesting support of the Norfolk delegation. For Norfolk's legislative priority <coughs> for the session. Dispense with uh, Dallas James. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, City Manager Jones. My name is Ellis James. I reside here in the city of Norfolk and have done so for a couple of years. <coughs> I would like very much to uh, support this resolution and the direction that you're giving to our delegation. I want to be sure of one thing. As I'm sure each of you are fully aware, the uranium mining lifting of the moratorium issue is front and center. And when I looked at the draft of this list that you're approving, it included the council's intention to direct the delegation to oppose lifting the moratorium, and I assume that that's still the case. So I fully support your efforts across the board in this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? By voting for this, that doesn't include us from adding some things to this. Am I correct? Okay. Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Did you have something in mind you wanted to slip yes, in here? Yes, I think we talked about it earlier. Okay. Right? <laughs> right. Okay. R21. An ordinance granting permission to Bob Colley, LLC, Barbara Colley, LLC, Arthur Colley, LLC, Ed Holding, LLC, and Chipotle Mexican Grill of Colorado, LLC, to encroach into the right-of-way to 1501 Colley Avenue and approving the terms and conditions of the encroachment agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Perfect. Aye. 
Mr. Protegerio? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R22. An ordinance requesting the Virginia Department of Transportation to establish a project for the Tidewater Drive and Little Creek Road intersection bridge improvement project, approving an agreement with the Department of Transportation for design and construction and appropriating and authorizing funds for the project in the amount of $4,875,000 subject to and in accordance with the terms and conditions of the agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Wait, wait, uh, I'm sorry. A question? Yes. Um, <laughs> And John, you're probably going to have to help me with this. When this project was first um, being introduced, it was <coughs> going to make that intersection um, at the same level. It was going to take away the underpass. Then it went back to it was too expensive to possibly do that. Um, and then it was just going to be a refurbishment of the whole intersection. So where are we right now with with this? Uh, it's as you stated, it is to completely refurbish the intersection but it will remain a grade separation okay. with the underpass to make it all at the same level as a couple million dollars of additional expense okay because there there was some opposition there were neighborhoods in that area that were not included in the initial discussion I think it was the wards corner neighborhoods that were <coughs> included and they wanted to move it but the actual neighborhoods around it were not included and they were opposed to making it uh, I guess you call it at grade That's intersection right. so okay. As, as we move forward, we'll have discussions with the adjoining Civic League. Yeah, thanks. Are you ready to Sorry. vote? Okay, thanks. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R23? An ordinance authorizing the purchase from Metro Tech Associates, Inc. of certain property located in the city of Norfolk and commonly known as 1551 38th Street on the south side of 38th Street for the sum of $380,000, approving the terms and conditions of the agreement and authorizing the expenditure of up to $400,000 to pay the purchase price and other transaction costs. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Penn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. That's all I have, Mr. President. Okay, that concludes the formal portion of tonight's agenda.